I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we're going back to our Python on Snowflake playlist, and we're going to be connecting to Snowflake using ODBC. Now, most of you are very familiar with uh, connecting to Snowflake using the Snowflake connector and using Snowpark and things like that. But what a lot of people don't know is that you can also connect to Snowflake using ODBC, which is kind of like the fundamental standard of you know, database connectivity, uh, you can also connect to Snowflake that way. Now, it doesn't have all of the perks and everything that you get if you use the connector, but it's also a great way to connect. Let's get to it. Interested in supporting my work? Make sure to join my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, guys, so the first thing that I did was I went to the uh, Snowflake uh, site and I went to this page uh, that you see up above there and I got the uh, download from them and of course the one I'm using is for Windows and uh, that's how we're going to proceed here. After downloading you'll see something like this and you can copy it from your downloads into whatever folder you're using there and then I went ahead and I just sort of did the double click and did the install. I chose the default options. It does put it into your program files uh, so you need to have administrator rights in order to do that. Um, and then it sort of blasts through um, <clears throat> installing it copies the files over and then you're pretty much done now make sure that you do get the right bit version so if you have 32-bit Python make sure you got 32 the 32-bit driver if you have 64-bit Python make sure you get the 64-bit driver otherwise you're not going to see this when you open the ODBC data data source administrator so what I did there was I typed ODBC into my search bar and there's there's going to be two there will be one for 32-bit and one for 64-bit so make sure you open the right uh, the right one so you'll see in the drivers tab there it does have the one I'm looking for and if I create a new DSN which is what I'm going to do here we can create a new DSN in order in order to test it that is a uh, data source and uh, uh, we're not going to use the data source in our programming because I don't recommend to use them, but data DSNs are great for testing out whether or not your download worked. Um, I uh, definitely recommend to always use a DSN-less connection. Um, they are much less hassle than trying to uh, manage a lot of DSNs on users' computers and things like that. So uh, we're just going to use this today in order to test out to see whether or not this actually worked. Uh, so you're going to have to put in some information, uh, put in the the uh, your username and your uh, you know your server and and all of that kind of stuff and your database and it will actually auto fill that tracing uh, number down below there um, and the role that you might want to use. Um, whether it's uh, sysadmin or public or whatever I'll just use public for now to see if I can connect using public and uh, and so those are sort of like the basic ones you can use oh yeah you do need to put your uh, uh, you know your account plus snowflakecomputing.com on there and uh, and then if you get a success like you see here great otherwise you might have to troubleshoot some stuff with your network or whatever it does use the default port of 443 and uh, that's going to get you ready to roll. And the next part of setup was to do pip install pyodbc that you see here. That's going to get pyodbc in your Python installation. And in order to do that, I opened a command window there. You can type cmd into your, uh, into your machine to get that black window where you can do your pip install. Um, now I've opened the idle shell here. And I'm saving a new file, um, and I've called it sf underscore odbc. And uh, I'm going to use uh, my import statement, get the right import statement, um, for pyodbc. And I have saved my credentials sort of above the scroll line there. So we'll be using a couple of uh, variables that have my uh, login credentials in them. Uh, but you'll see those in a minute here. So uh, we're just going to use the single library PyODBC and we're going to create a connection string. Now this is the most important part. Uh, connection strings are pretty amazing across all programming languages. Uh, you can use them in 
in all kinds of different ways and it's going to help you to get away from using uh, data sources. So the first thing we're going to put in our connection string is our the name of our Snowflake driver and that's what we downloaded and we saw that in the ODBC administrator uh, which you saw before there. Um, so that was listed under the drivers tab and you need to make sure that the spelling is exactly uh, what is in there. Uh, otherwise the driver it'll say driver not found uh, and things like that. So next you'll notice that the delimiter is a semicolon there and we're going to add our next key value pair into this connection string and that's going to be the server. So we'll put server equals and then our account and then for me it was .snowflakecomputing.com. It might be different for you. You need to check uh, what your uh, instance is and I'll make sure I put a semicolon after that one as well and we'll build a string here um, and I'm going to put in the warehouse next um, so we'll also have a warehouse we're going to specify the warehouse of our connection just like we did when we used the snowflake connector if you haven't seen that video getting started with the snowflake connector uh, the link will be in the description um, so you can have an alternate way of connecting but we also specify the warehouse database and schema at the time of connection it's a very nice way of doing it uh, so that when you start to execute commands your SQL commands um, you're exactly in the environment you want to be in right where you want to be and you can you can run all of those commands and so there we go we've got our schema in there as well and you can also specify your role um, I'll, I'll put in um, sysadmin, I think, for the role I'm connecting now, but you could put in public uh, or whatever it is. If there's another role that you've created, you can use that um, so you can specify the role. And then after you've specified the role, the next thing that you want to do is you'll put in your username and password. Um, like I said, I've stored those in variables. You may get those from Key Vault or something like that or, or however you do it. But for today, I've got them in variables already, so I can just put UID equals and then my password and then the semicolon. And then the next one would be uh, password, and that's PWD and equals and then your password and then another semicolon. And building of the, the building of the string is super important. You need to make sure everything is just right um, so that you have everything everything that you need you can also specify more things like timeouts and all kinds of other stuff um, so make sure you check that in the documentation so there's our driver we've got our server with our account dot snowflake computing dot com and of course I made sure to put my semicolon on the end there because uh, we're building a string with semicolons as delimiters um, and uh, there's our warehouse our database and the schema that we want um, and then the role that we want to use for this connection and then of course uh, once we've got our sysadmin in there or public or whatever we, we put in our username and password and that is sort of like the the essence of the connection string and uh, connection strings are really great they're going to help us to um, to, to connect and do it without using a DSN and managing DSN files and stuff. Um, so we can get started with our programming then. Uh, we're going to use a try except finally block and the first thing we're going to try and do is just get connected and disconnect and see if we can get that far first. So in order to do that we will use our pio.connect there and we'll plunk in our connection string as the argument and then if we're successful uh, we can print connected after that so we'll get that sort of success message if if we actually are able to connect using this and then we'll do our accept uh, block here and what we'll do is we'll do accept exception as e and then all we're going to do is just print e if we get a problem so that we can figure out what's going on there um, and then we'll do a finally uh, block and then we'll say if if there's connection uh, then uh, we'll close that connection and we'll print uh, connection closed uh, in the same uh, if 
um, statement there. So we will get that connection closed if it did close it. And then we'll print done, uh, regardless of what happens. And that'll be our, our um, sort of structure here. So we'll use that try. If it's okay, then we'll get a finally, no problem. Uh, if it's a try and there's an error, then we'll have an error print off and it'll still try to close that and then it'll print done at the very end. Okay, so I think I'm good to go. Have a final look over here of everything. And uh, then once I think it all looks good, I'll hit F5 and uh, oh, that was very quick. Okay, so it started, it connected uh, using that port 443, which is a default. And then it put our connection closed message in. So it did get through to that finally block and then it printed done at the end and that is exactly what we want to see so now we're ready to go ahead and and do some stuff so uh, in ODBC it's almost exactly the same as using the uh, connector uh, so we're gonna we're gonna get a cursor in the same way that we do with the connector um, so we'll do cnn.cursor uh, we'll put that into our CS variable there the the uh, cursor variable and then we can just make up, uh, you know, an SQL string for a select. We'll do that first. Um, so I'll just select star from project. There's only so many uh, rows in my project table. You guys have probably seen uh, many of those before. If you've been following this playlist, um, I've used this project database many times. And so what I'll do is I'll say uh, rex is equal to uh, cs.execute SQL and then uh, for record in records, uh, I'll print the print off the record that we have there. And so that's very straightforward. That's our SQL. Uh, we've got our cursor and we're going to execute that SQL using the cursor. Um, and that's going to be uh, loading that variable there. And then we're going to sort of loop through that, that, uh, that um, set of records that comes back and then we'll see what we get and we'll print it off. So very sort of like low level here. Um, you can see it, it even gives the decimal on here. Uh, but we do have a, uh, a successful return of a, of a record set here. Uh, and uh, we've got, you know, our new mansion project and we've got some ID numbers in there and things like that. And uh, so this looks pretty rough. We will do this using pandas as well. If you guys are interested in that, make sure to put that comment in the comments below. If you want me to extend this lesson into using pandas with this so we can get pandas data frames, I can also do that as well. Um, but what we'll do next is uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do an insert statement next and just see what that looks like. Next we can go ahead and uh, create our insert statement. So we'll use that same variable uh, SQL equals you know insert into uh, project, that's the name of our table, and we'll We'll uh, specify the ID column, the project name column, and the project description column. Um, and then we can just, you know, we'll do a hard coded insert here for today. Uh, so I'll put in, uh, you know, 9116. I think that's the next one there. You can see on the left side, 9115 is the strawberry farm. So we'll do 9116 crypto bank, and I'll just say uh, a global crypto bank. Um, and that'll be our insert statement. Um, three values into, into the uh, row, into a new row, and we'll see how that works with ODBC here. So, so that's our entire string there. Um, and uh, we can use the same cursor. So we still have the cursor open, and you can actually say, you know, you know, my variable equals cs.execute um, and it will return the number of rows affected if, if you want to loop through that or look at that, you can do that. Or you can just say cs.execute if it's a, an action statement like this, um, you know, an insert statement uh, and discard the value. So we're just going to run that against the, the server, uh, the Snowflake uh, server there. And then we're going to add a commit. Now, if you don't add the commit, if you don't have auto commit turned on, uh, your insert will not show when you go ahead and select again. Um, so what I'll do is I'll 
uh, as the next step here, I'll go ahead and I'll select from our project table again, just like we did before. And I guess I can just use the, the previous uh, select that we did there. I could have just copied the whole thing down. So let's just copy that down for now. Um, and in fact, I think I will delete the, the select from up above there so we don't get this happening twice. Um, so let's just go ahead and take those four lines because we moved them below the insert. So we want to insert and then select from it so that we can see if the insert worked. <laughs> and so that's what we did there. We've got our, our uh, select statement. That's going to select against it using the same cursor again. Uh, and uh, we'll hit F5 and see what happens. So we start, we connect. Uh, the insert happened in the background by the looks of it and there it is our 9116 you can see this is the last row previously and now we've got a new last row in our table and that's the crypto bank um, and uh, we could also try to do a delete for example so i could just go ahead and that's that cranberry farm so maybe the cranberry farm is not operational anymore or something so we'll delete the cranberry farm and uh, so in order to do that, we can use the same structure that we had there. Uh, we've got our cs.execute SQL and everything all set up. So we can just change the SQL to something different. Um, in this case, uh, delete statement, which will also be kind of an action uh, statement. So we're gonna delete that one row and then and then we're also going to select again because uh, we've got our select statement down below. So this should produce a set without the, the cranberry farm in it. And yes, that is exactly what we want to see there. And so that is how you can use ODBC with Python on Snowflake. And make sure to stay tuned on this playlist because I will be doing my next episode on how to use the foundation of ODBC, which we did today, with pandas so that we can use some of those powerful, you know, uh, reading from uh, SQL and also uh, to SQL, uh, sending tables to Snowflake and things like that using pandas. Need more resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.